The ISA mill is a horizontal, high-intensity stirred mill. The motor is started via a liquid resistance starter or a VSD, which allows the ISA mill to be started under load. Motor speed is reduced by the gearbox to a shaft speed designed for the duty. The grinding chamber is enclosed within the shell, feed flange and discharge flange, and these components are all rubber lined. The isomal contains rotating rubber lined disposable grinding discs mounted on a cantilevered shaft. The product separator retains media in the isomal by first centrifuging it and then pumping it back towards the feed end of the isomal. The shaft is sealed from the atmosphere by means of a wet packed gland. Water is supplied to the gland seal for lubrication and heat removal. A separate water line supplies gland flushing water to keep media and slurry out of the gland area. For maintenance inspection, the isomal is flushed to remove slurry and the media dumped through the scuttle valve into the media hopper below the isomal. Generally, the isomal operates 70 to 80% full of grinding media. The isomal contains rotating rubber line disposable grinding discs mounted on a cantilevered shaft. The discs arranged along the isomal shaft agitate the media and essentially set up a series of grinding chambers between each disc. Feed slurry, which is pumped in at the non-drive end of the isomal, must pass through the highly agitated media in each of the grinding chambers before it has a chance to exit the isomal. This prevents short-circuiting of the feed through the isomil. Grinding by attrition and abrasion of the particles occurs as it comes into contact with the agitated media. Between each disc, a recirculating pattern of media is generated as the disc rotates. Velocity is imparted to the media as it is lifted by the holes in the rotating discs. Media is drawn out along the face of the opposing discs towards the shell due to the generated centrifugal force. As a result of the spacing between the discs, the media and slurry mixture is then drawn back in towards the shaft at the midpoint between the two discs. This sets up a chamber of highly agitated media between each disc through which slurry must pass. At the discharge end of the isomil, there is a smaller gap between the last disc and the rotor disc of the product separator than the gap between all the other discs. Coarse material that enters this zone, including any media that is dragged towards the discharge end of the isomil, is centrifuged out towards the shell in this section. Due to the close spacing, there is no recirculation. The rotor fingers which turn with the rotor disc act in conjunction with the stationary displacement body to pump some of the slurry back towards the feed end of the ISOMIL. mill. As the slurry is pumped back towards the feed end, it collects the centrifuged media and pushes it back towards the feed end of the ISOMIL. mill. In this way, the media is retained within the ISOMIL, mill, while a flow rate of ground product equal to the feed flow rate is allowed to be discharged. The fresh feed to the isomal circuit is pumped, or flows by gravity, to an agitated surge tank. The purpose of the surge tank is to dampen out variations in flow from the upstream circuit to produce a more stable feed flow rate to the pre-cyclones and as a result a more stable fresh feed flow rate and size distribution to the isomal. The pre-cyclones are designed to dewater the feed ahead of the isomal to produce an isomal feed density of 40 to 60 percent solids. The cyclones are designed and operated such that the cyclone overflow stream has a size distribution no greater than that of the isomal product. Pre-cyclone feed flow rate, feed pressure and feed density are measured and monitored. The cyclone underflow gravitates to the isomal feed pump box while the overflow bypasses the isomil and enters the discharge pump box. Here it combines with the isomil discharge. Cyclone feed underflow usually passes over a trash screen 
before it enters the ISOMIL feed pump box. This is to ensure that no foreign objects have the opportunity to enter the ISOMIL and potentially cause damage. Any oversized material is collected in a trash bin for removal. Slurry from the feed pump box is pumped into the ISOMIL. The feed flow rate, slurry density and slurry pressure are monitored and interlocked. The level in the feed pump box is maintained by varying the amount of isomil discharge recycled to the feed pump box by manipulation of the proportional control valves on the isomil discharge line. Water can also be added to control isomil feed density. The feed slurry passes through the isomil where it is ground to the required product size. Product size is determined by the balance between power draw and feed tonnage. Grinding media, new and recovered, is stored in the isomil media bin located underneath the isomil. To maintain the target power draw, additional media must be added into the isomil to replace the media that has worn out and this is done automatically with the ISA charger. The ISA charger transfers media from the media bin into the isomil feed pump box where it is mixed with slurry and pumped into the isomil. Media addition is automated and is triggered on deviation of the measured power draw from the power draw set point. The feed block valve on the inlet to the isomil will close whenever the isomil is tripped or shut down. This prevents media being pumped back and blocking the feed line. A flushing line between the block valve and the isomil opens for a short period once the block valve has closed. This is done to flush any media from the pipe section between the feed block valve and the grinding chamber back into the isomil. There are two proportional valves on the discharge line, the discharge recycle valve and the discharge feed valve. The position of these valves is automatically controlled to maintain the required level set point in the isomil feed pump box by recycling isomil discharge slurry. Ground slurry discharged from the isomil that is not recycled passes into the discharge pump box where it joins the pre-cyclone overflow stream. During the startup and shutdown, the isomil is operated in full recycle mode to recycle any media lost while the isomil rotor reaches its full operating speed. The temperature of the discharge slurry as it exits the isomil is measured and interlocked. The isomil gland seals the gap between the rotating shaft and the drive-in flange of the isomil, so that the contents of the isomil cannot leak out along the shaft. There are two separate flows of water to the gland system that are usually both supplied from the same gland water tank and pump or source. The gland seal water is supplied to the gland packing, which creates the seal between the rotating shaft and the gland. The gland seal water lubricates the gland packing while it also carries away generated heat. The flow of water to the gland and pressure seen at the gland is a function of the gland adjustment. The gland flushing water is used to flush any slurry and media away from the gland area. Maric flow restrictors are used to control gland water flow to the isomil to a set value whatever delivery line pressure variations. The gearbox lubrication system provides lubrication oil and cooling for the isomil gearbox. It is essential for its efficient long-term operation. Oil is pumped up to the gearbox and returns via gravity. When required, the pumped oil is diverted through the heat exchanger prior to sending to the gearbox. Dual filters allow changeovers while running. The cooling may either be an air or water system. In this instance, cooling is by means of air. 
ISO mill motors that use slipper bearings have an external motor bearing lubrication system that must operate while the motor is running. Oil is pumped up to the drive end and non-drive end bearings and returns via gravity. When required, the cooling system is automatically activated to cool the oil. Dual filters allow changeovers while running. Isomal bearings are equipped with a labyrinth sealing system to prevent dust and water getting into the isomal bearing and causing damage. The M10,000, M5,000 and M3,000 isomals have a Vogel automated greasing unit that continually supplies grease to the four labyrinths. The system is usually set up to pulse every eight hours while the isomal is operational. Water for the ISA charger can either be supplied directly coupled from the plant process water system or from a separate water supply tank and pump. The use of the separate tank and pump allows for the water recovered from the media dewatering screen to be returned to the water tank for reuse. With proven one-to-one -one direct scale-up from laboratory test work, Installing isomol technology significantly reduces project risk. Accurate test work and scale-up is essential for project performance. A key feature of isomol technology is that all full production isomols have been accurately scaled up from test work in a 4-litre M4 laboratory mill or M20 pilot mill. The excellent scale-up of the isomol is a result of a combination of characteristics including using media of the same specification and size in the full-scale mills and the test units. In both full-scale and test isomills, media and slurry is agitated in a similar manner. And the layout of the mill in the full-scale and test units is the same. The mill is horizontal and has multiple grinding chambers. Isomill scale-up is accurate in terms of power consumption and product size distribution. Power scale-up is accurate because power is measured as power consumption at the agitator shaft to determine the specific energy requirements and the size of the mill. Note the very close fit between 4-litre ISO mill and M3000 ISO mill signature plots generated from the same feed sample. Particle size distribution scale-up is accurate because of the horizontal ISO mill layout which eliminates any short-circuiting and the classifying action of the product separator. Both features are common to the laboratory and full-scale units. The sharp isomal particle size distribution is a big advantage for flotation and leaching operations. This accurate scale-up is different than scale-up for ball mills or other stirred milling technologies. Particle size measurement is not a trivial matter especially for ultra-fine grinds because of the exponential increase in grinding power. Gain from 9 micron to 7 micron can increase grinding power by 50%, so sizing must be measured accurately and consistently. Initial testing uses an M4 isomole to accurately determine the relationship between specific power draw and product size, the signature plot. Alternatively, fully self-contained M20 plant pilot rigs are available for on-site campaigns. M20 pilot rigs can determine power requirements while investigating media consumption and downstream processing performance on real plant streams. Isomol technology includes not just the grinding mill, it incorporates the entire grinding system. From design through to construction, commissioning and maintenance, our engineering resources have developed grinding systems that work. This reduces the risk to customers, both the end user and engineering firms. The design has been years in development. Each grinding plant design is an improvement on the last one. Feedback from the last installation is incorporated into the current plant design. Extrata Technology knows and understands the circuit and can design it for optimal performance. 
Extrata Technology works closely with customers through the life cycle of the technology applied in the customer's plant. Our involvement often starts with conceptual study through the design, construction, commissioning and maintenance of the system. This is achieved through Extrata Technology's own extensive global engineering resources. These resources are being continually expanded. Isomil technology can be delivered to the customer under a variety of models to allow for maximum flexibility without compromising on quality or cost. The scope can include process and engineering design, supply, construction and commissioning of a fully integrated modular grinding system delivered to the customer's site for easy installation by a local contractor. The complete grinding system comprises the isomill and associated auxiliary equipment including tanks, hopper, pumps, pipework, platforms, structural steel and control system on supply only or turnkey basis. We at Extrata Technology are pleased to have shared the technical details of the isomal operations with you. Thank you for lending us your attention.